Caitlin, welcome to the Personal Best Podcast. Thank you. So happy to be here. How are you doing? How's life at the moment? Life is good. Yeah. yeah. I feel coming into here, sense of calm. I think it's quite nice to actually just stop for a moment. Things have been quite hectic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're in like a quiet soundproof room. So I feel like it's a really nice space to just like have a chill, calm conversation. But I normally start podcast episodes with getting the guests to do a little personal introduction. So if you can, in brief, explain where you're from, what do you do, that kind of thing, that'd be really great for all the listeners. Yes, um, so I am Caitlin. Um, I have always had a passion for fitness, Mm. um, background in running, uh, long distance running. It was kind of my therapy when I was little for sort of coping with, you know, Get becoming a teenager, um, not feeling good enough, and running was like my time to kind of work through those thoughts. Um, and I didn't realize it at the time that that was actually what I was doing. I just sort of enjoyed it, um, and it was sort of, you know, played to my strengths. Um, yeah. So, and then I kind of got caught up in the sort of path, the traditional path of what they say that you should do. Uh, so went to uni and kind of did various different jobs in the city, uh, different kind of marketing consulting jobs. Um, but it was during the pandemic that I started to, like everyone did, reevaluate actually what makes me happy and yeah. kind of what, what do I want to do? Yeah. And this opportunity came about. Um, I was training at F45 at the time, spending so much time there, seeing community building and impact like at the forefront of like the, the kind of the power that can have. And somebody gave me an opportunity and were like, you know, do you want to come and sort of lead the ship of a new F45 that's opening? Um, and I decided that was kind of my first, let's take the leap, yeah. you know, it kind of bring, bring my business skills into more of the fitness world. Um, and so I did that. I did a studio manager role at F45 Teddington. Um, and that was my first opportunity, again, to kind of think about how do you build a community from, yes, you've got a brand F45, but Mm. you're coming into a new town um, off the back of the pandemic. People want to be training more, um, but they might not necessarily be ready to. um, And really thinking about what it means to be in that local town. So thinking about how do you cultivate partnerships with like sports clubs and schools and to really become sort of very much part of what that place is Mm -hmm. and to get people in the door. So found that a super rewarding experience and learned so much from that. And I really believe things happen for a reason. I think we'll come on to talk about some of the Mm. things that have happened recently, but Mm. it's all part of the process. So, you know, learning that and understanding, you know, what it takes to build a community and kind of feeling that sense of like, you're part of something bigger. Like, you know, people would come into this gym and from all different backgrounds and they'd have stressful days and it was just a 45 minute workout. But the difference after it, after how they felt, they put their phone away, it was their time. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't thinking about their kids or their job. And seeing that and then being able to sort of capitalize that at scale really excited me. Um, so did that and then kind of went into a job uh, at Linus and so in that most recent uh, job had the opportunity to kind of build my network and work with some coaches who've been on this podcast actually um, and kind of help them to scale their businesses so understanding you know for people who are brilliant content creators how to take that to the next level and help Mm. them to kind of reach more clients and ultimately for them to change lives because that's what coaches do yeah Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like I need to employ you now for something. <laughs> that, was, that was so good. But um, yeah, you're absolutely right that I think there is such a space right now for fitness communities. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people are realizing that. And I know that you're obviously a part of that. But it's funny as well, you talking about lockdown, because I just recorded my first solo podcast episode, which is a new thing I'm doing. And in that, I was reflecting on my time during lockdown, because mm-hmm. I was on a gap year out of university, so a different stage in my life. Mm. But I was definitely dealing with those questions of what do I want to do and who do I want to be? And sometimes that's really difficult. And it's quite nice sometimes when, yeah, things slowly start to fall into place and you realize that actually the decisions that you made have got you to where you are Mm. now. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about how I first came across your page and sort of uh, discovered you, for (laughs) want of a better phrase, because... If people listening don't already know, uh, Caitlin was approached by Simon Squibb, who is a entrepreneur who helps people achieve their dreams. So 
obviously he came up to you and asked you, do you have a dream? Mm. And what was that interaction like? And what was your answer to that? So bear in mind, um, Millennium Bridge, like I know so well. I I (laughs) walk over it every day, twice a day. And this one time um, I was actually staying late in the office, you know, later than normal. And Jenny uh, Fit, who's been on this podcast, I'm pretty sure I stayed because of her. So I think she was doing some content and I was keeping her company. Um, So that kind of made me leave later than normal. And I had my headphones on. It was a cold, wet evening. Mm -hmm. Um, And I see this guy uh, come up to me with a microphone in, in a tux. And I guess from jobs, you know, when I did jobs at uni, uh, brand ambassador jobs, I understand it's quite soul destroying if you don't stop and interact with somebody. Yes. So I thought he was trying to sell me something and I just thought I'd give him the benefit of, you know, the doubt and the time. And so many people walk past, but I was like, hi. And mm. he, I didn't know who he was. And he says that, what's your dream? And that's the first thing he said. Yeah. Wow. Literally those three words. Mm. And I don't know what you would say to that, but the last time someone asked me that, maybe I was at school, but it wasn't yeah. even that question. It was, what do you want to be when you're older? Not necessarily, you know, it's sort of associating that you're going to be able to reach your dreams. Mm-hmm. And I guess my answer came from a very intuitive place because what I said surprised me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I have always wanted to travel and to kind of explore and to sort of, you know, my dad's when I was younger, he set up his first business and kind of moved to Australia. And I guess intuitively, I always thought I want to do the same. Like, you know, I want to go after and think big and try something different and break the mold. And yet I was still in London and I'm mm. 30 and it's the only city I've ever known. And there was this disconnect. And so I shared, I shared my dream. I said, I wanted to go abroad. I said, I'd always had this thought that maybe if I went to Bali, I could kind of make that work and, you know, work remotely. And I guess having worked with lots of online fitness coaches, I knew there was a big network there. And I had some ideas of like doing retreats so that I could support friends who continuously tell me they're burnt out. And I had no idea who he was and the platform that he had. Yes. And so when I did that interview and, and he kind of said, you know, you know, good luck. And I kind of gave him my Instagram handle and I walked home and I, I sort of looked him up. I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to maybe yeah. maybe be seen by a lot of people. Um, and I forgot about it. And it kind of weeks went past um, and it caught me off guard. It was a Friday evening. I just finished work and it sort of said, you know, Simon Squibbs invites you to collaborate on a reel. Yes. And then I I reminded, you know, I was reminded of what I said and and I cannot explain what happened. Like just the support and it makes me a bit emotional because Mm. these people don't know me, but they're coming forward to like really help me to like make this dream happen because for an outsider, it's so simple. Just catch a flight, just just move to Bali. And they're like, what's stopping you? Like, how can I help? Can I give you um, contacts for a visa? You know, what is it that like, you know, do you need someone to test out this concept of a retreat? Like, do you you need like, are you scared you're not gonna know anyone out there? I can introduce you to somebody. Yeah. Isn't it funny yeah. the like support that you can get from strangers, like you say, because I think often when we try and make decisions about our own lives, we think about all the barriers that are in the way and it's like, but what about this? And I can't do that and da da da. Mm. And sometimes it just takes like a person who doesn't know you to just give you that push and that encouragement and also be willing to help. Like that's yeah. so nice. Exactly, it's exactly that. And the conversations I've had with my friends is when I ask them the same, it's, you know, well, what is your dream? Do you, do, you, do you know what it is? Mm. And if you don't, then, you know, maybe you should. And then you start to think about, am I actually doing something that's aligned with my dream? And around me, there's this energy and, you know, I feel like so excited by it because people are starting to ask themselves that question. And, mm. and that's the effect and mission that Simon's on. And that's why I'm such a big advocate for what he does, because it's not just um, about the kind of content, you know, it's not just about these reels. There's so much support behind it. He has, uh, it's called the Help Bank. And he connects you there to, you know, all these different people and services and support that kind of take you and your idea and your initiative to that next level. And, you know, whether that's investment or whether you need various different like business support. So and he like, you know, he does sort of support you. So, you know, you can contact him, um, you know, via Instagram and, you know, he's always willing to give advice. And Mm -hmm. I think you have to be very um, willing to receive feedback um, and I, I'll tell you a quick story if we have time, but um, I uh, messaged him and I said to him, I've decided to um, act on this uh, act on this dream. I've said to him, like, I've run out of reasons 
why I shouldn't. Interesting. You know, yeah. I don't have any like major commitments, don't have a partner here. Um, I was hoping, um, and it has happened, that my job would let me work remotely. So that was that was kind of lined up. And I just said to him, I just want you to know that I have followed through and, and done this and you've been part of that story. Um, and he gave me a, a voice note back and he was like, so um, like, you know, so happy for me. And I said to him, I was like, right, I'm gonna do a video um, announcing that I'm making this dream happen. And I was like, I wanna really invest a lot of money and time into it. So mm -hmm. I did this like full production of the video. And I remember sending it to him and he just said to me, it's just, it's just not gonna work. It's, it's not gonna land. And I think, you know, obviously the first- The announcement video wasn't gonna work? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. And I remember like that first reaction being like, it's like taking your like your, your like homework to your dad and being like, <laughs> you know, do you like it? And he's like, no. And you're like, okay. But then you're like, actually, this is, thank you for telling me this because mm -hmm. like before I push this out and I wanna have this big splash and, you know, really sort of have a big impact, I wanna know that's gonna get the right message and you probably know best. and he gave that feedback but then he was like well let me help you to sort of reframe it and so he was like meet me back at millennium bridge yes i've seen this video yes he said oh, meet wow. me there you've got 20 minutes i'll be there and so i was like to my uh, to my manager at work i was like please can i go um and i i went and you've seen that video so yeah. we we redid it and it was it was way better it was way more authentic um you know it wasn't i think the video i did was scripted this was very much like him and i just bumping into each other and me telling him and yeah that was that was that video yeah but that's amazing i mean not many people get that opportunity i guess and it does feel like one of those moments where maybe the stars just aligned at the right time, like you mm -hmm. said, when you first met him on Millennium Bridge. But I wanna talk about this idea of pursuing your dream a little mm -hmm. bit deeper because I'm sure that a lot of people listening to this podcast do have a dream that they're aspiring to, mm -hmm. to reach or maybe they don't. And I think it is quite difficult when you're pushed to like follow your passions and then you're thinking, oh, but what is that? Like there's a bit of a sticking point. Mm -hmm. And I heard a really good piece of advice from Mal Robbins and she said, if you don't know what you want to do or what your dream is, look at people you're jealous of. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like look at their life, look at their job. If you're jealous of them, that's sort of telling you that you want the same. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's a really good piece of advice to follow if you're sort of in that situation but if you are like yourself someone who is clearly passionate about uh, a certain thing like health and fitness and building communities in that space then it's nice that you've got that goal to work towards and I just wondered what steps you've obviously made and what steps you're making to sort of get there yeah it's it's so interesting I mean like we were saying before we started recording like you know you can have that I guess intention to follow your dream mm -hmm. but then practical things come into all play all the time all the time mm. you know it's that like you know money money is a massive one you know that 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 sort of plays on your you it can delay your dreams um and that can be a thing that you know you, you just think it's not it's not the right time you've got responsibilities whatever they look like you know whether that's a partner or family all these things that you're trying to juggle um and then you've got i guess society's expectations as well you know yeah. what that means or you know differently like I am a 30 year old woman, you know, and I like, I'm not married or, you know, mm. my friends are starting to get engaged in things. And that plays out sometimes where, you know, you're like, well, should I be putting energy into finding my life partner? Or should I actually be using this time and enjoying being single and use it for good? And, and that's what I've done in terms of self love and a journey. But yeah, it's that switch. It's that reframing that I think has helped me in the path towards thinking about what my dream is. And I think you have to be open to that evolving. You know, you can kind of have a destination in mind and then it's working and being, like you said, surrounded by people who are gonna help you get there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I work with coaches who um, have clients and they keep those clients accountable and they help help with their lives. But coaches need coaches. Mm -hmm. I am the coach to them. They use me to, be, to have all those things because sometimes they can't do it for themselves or sometimes they need that person to help them unlock that. And I have the same, like I always look for, to your point, people who inspire me, yeah. uh, you know, mentors who can support me. And I think that's what you, you need in order to kind of help you be successful. Definitely. I think on the flip side of that, there's this 
pattern which is like if you're always chasing for that next thing and you're never fully fulfilled it can be quite a lonely journey and that's one of the things that I'm starting to find I'm really trying to be a bit more sort of you know mindful of like where I've come from and what I'm doing and just enjoying it Mm -hmm. because otherwise Mm -hmm. you know it becomes you know it's I love it but if you start to always pick at the oh what I could do better the dream's here and I'm here and I want to get there quicker you you lose that sort of love so that's what I'm starting to understand a bit more and we'll come on to talk about Rocks Queens which is a community that I'm I'm building at the moment yeah um but I myself I'm an athlete and you know I, I I um I take part in high rocks races um, and sometimes I forget about my own training <laughs> because yeah. I'm so focused on the dream of building this community and helping other people that I sometimes don't give myself that self-love. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's all really good advice. And I feel like I could, you know, we could go on to talk about all of those different topics. Mm. But let's move on to talk about High Rocks because yes. as you mentioned, you are a High Rocks athlete. And mm. I, I read that you came second when yes. you competed in Amsterdam mm-hmm. at the Women's Open, which is so impressive. But I'd love to know how you got into that sport. But first of all, for anyone that doesn't know what it is, how would you describe it? Yes, um, so High Rocks, um, for people who don't know, is one of the fastest growing fitness races, um, but essentially it is eight stations and between each station you have a one kilometer run. Mm-hmm. So that is the sticking point because you go into each station with fatigued legs and you're doing everything from sled pulls, sled pushes, um, you've got farmers carries, you've got wall balls. Yeah. And there's two main categories. You have open, which is open to all abilities. So when I um, got onto the podium in, in Amsterdam, that was an open race and, and I podiumed in my age group, which I was really proud of. Um, it's all relative because that was a massive achievement for me and I'm so happy. But then you progress to pro. So yeah. then you start to, it's a whole new race. Like the weights go up and the standard goes up. It's the same race, but like for a woman, the weights are like almost doubled on every station. Yeah. Um, and if I'm, I think I'm correct in thinking that there isn't a certain time you just have to podium to get through to pro is that right so you if yeah if you qualify um in terms of if in your age group if you come first or second then you yeah you qualify and yeah. you get uh, moved up to pro automatically yeah. which is a, a big difference you know and and so i i qualified in october and then the world champs were coming up um you know a couple months later so i had to make that transition very quickly which is when i got my my high rocks coach george edwards mm. um to kind of help with that um but yeah that's there's there's leveling up leveling up physically and then there's leveling up mentally which is a whole whole yeah. other thing yeah but obviously you said uh, right at the beginning that you spent a lot of time running when you mm. were younger so how did you make that transition into high rocks yeah it's it's a great question so um f45 like i loved it and Mm -hmm. um that was kind of my thing for like five six years and then i guess it evolved you know thinking about what can i do next sort of you know something that's more competitive something that i can train towards and um my best friend simon who was a member at f45 teddington when i was studio manager there he got me into it and he sort of suggested that we train for it Mm. um and it was from that point onwards that when you started to train and sort of enjoy the process and from that point onwards I was like I want to take this more seriously yeah um but as I came on to realize especially following an online coaching plan it can be quite lonely you know following this coaching plan and going into a gym and you know doing the same workout I had to go through a strength block because that's where I was I could run yes Mm. but then when it came to the stations at pro I still have a long way to go to be able to um, sort of compete at that level so I'm doing the same exercises every week by myself again and again and it was at that point that I thought there's got to be other women who are going through this yeah you know I'm sure like and I remember running I feel like things happen to me on a cold wet day it always <laughs> seems to be the trend but I was running around this running track by myself and I remember going into that running session having had messages from friends I think I was like seeking someone to be like oh like go I was like oh should I do this session and I was wanting a fr- I was hoping a friend would be like oh you should like go but actually my friends were like you don't need to go like you know you're like you're so you train so hard like take it easy oh, yeah. and I was like I appreciate that but like I want people that get it that like I'm not obsessed 
it's just that I want to be successful in this sport and I was thinking about this all in my head and I was running around the track and I thought I'm going to reach out to a few people on Instagram and just see just see if anybody fancies training together just to break up the mundaneness of online of following this online coaching plan not to say George's plan is not interesting yeah. but yeah. <laughs> I just yeah I wanted to kind of mix that up because I think I missed from F45 classes that sort of class environment you push yourself more so I remember Instagramming a couple of girls and I wasn't expecting the response that I got like everyone coming back and being like yes like let, let's meet up I want to do this like mm. actually can my friend come and then I remember like just it's sort of spiraling because I was like well let's create a whatsapp group and I said to a few friends would you mind joining this whatsapp group because I was nervous that nobody would join and it's funny because they're like you didn't need us to join yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just in case just in case and then friends told their friends and then before I knew it there was like two three hundred of us in wow. like a couple of days and we were people athletes from not just london but across the uk so like we had people from scotland from ireland um from across the north of the uk and that's when like kind of i needed support and i then decided to bring in a few ambassadors so i had a look at like who was um like a pro athlete in a particular Mm. area or who could help me on this mission and again it's that risk of like hi you don't know me but I'm just an athlete in a, in the sport I really like I follow you I really enjoy who you are and what you do fancy coming into this community uh, yeah and they were happy to I, c- I couldn't offer any money I was yeah. just like do you want to join and they said yes um and it was at that point that we then decided actually I think we might have something here like there seems to be a sort of pattern here which is that people this sport is growing and mm. yet maybe the support for women in particular is a place where then there needs to be more focus and by bringing people together like feeling that they're not alone supporting each other is really powerful um and so it's i'm really excited about it there's now over a thousand of us um from across the uk um and we have different groups if we're going to races across europe um and the whole like the whole idea is that yes you kind of talk online and you support each other yeah but when you're racing there's people you know in the crowds Mm. and that like I get a bit emotional because like I used to go to races by myself and you know I didn't know anyone and like you know it's high rocks is hard like you go through such a journey mentally and physically and just knowing that there's people there like who back you yeah and like who who are there for you the whole way up actually not even just on race day like they are they are the ones who get you they are the ones that give you that push um Mm. and yeah so that's and that's when that's where we're at and it's we have this sort of online community but we now meet at least once a month in person as well so amazing best of both amazing and that's obviously you've built that up and it's called rocks queens right Mm -hmm. and uh i just think it sounds incredible and the reason i ask you to just explain high rocks is because it has just sort of appeared out of nowhere Mm. this new fitness competition but I actually heard someone repeat what the founder had said and it's that it's this competition for people who are into the gym because I guess previously you had like the CrossFit games but Mm. CrossFit again is quite a different style of training whereas Mm. High Rocks is competing uh, in more like functional fitness Um, but like you said it seems to have just exploded but maybe the communities for people involved in that sport were sort of missing and I think it's a really interesting point that you make about training being quite lonely because obviously you're so focused on your goals and it matters to you and it's important to you but not everyone is going to understand that and especially with it being such a new type of sport people might not view you as the same if you were like a pro netball player do you know what I mean they're like what do you mean you're doing this like fitness competition so to then build a community of people who are all training for the same thing Mm -hmm. I think is so amazing and I just wondered why you think maybe that was missing for women Mm. rather than men yeah it's an interesting one and I I want to tread carefully with it because I think there's a risk of being when you're too too inclusive you're a bit exclusive right yeah but I do think that for women in particular, we have additional challenges and barriers that men might not have. Mm. You know, all those things that we're juggling. Um, and I think when it comes down to, not necessary to say that men don't have these issues, but I do think that, you know, when it comes to things around like 
um, self esteem and you know maybe think things just knowing that support supports there yeah. is really helpful. Um, and I think that you know there is this trend that I'm really excited about, which is it's not about competing with each other. It really is about supporting uh, each other to kind of be the best that we can. And whether that's like somebody coming in who is, you know, we have a group for newbies. So it's very much like, you know, anyone to, to your point of what Hyrox is, it's for anyone of any fitness ability. Mm -hmm. You have that support uh, no matter your age. And we've even got like some of the elites in there, which is really nice because again, it's that sort of we're all in it together. Mm. Um, but I think I think that's I think that's important for, for women to have. But it's a really interesting point because to date we have been just female focused um but at the high rocks world champs we actually decided to do a run that was open to everybody yeah. um and we um we did that with travis um and you know i think that was really nice because we wanted it to be all about the fact that like celebrating we're all athletes here coming mm. together and that felt like the right move at the right time and again, it was a bit of a risk. I was nervous that maybe some women wouldn't feel comfortable, but everybody kind of got it. And I think that that worked really well. Yeah. So I think it maybe depends on the sort of format and I guess point of time that mm. could happen, but it's not to say we can never evolve into that. Yeah, but I think I think for now, it sounds like it's working so well. And I think it is definitely needed. And maybe, yeah, to your point about women sometimes having lower self-esteem, I think particularly, in sport that is definitely true I think women don't always carry the same confidence that men have in terms of their abilities to do things yeah. and that is a big driver for me doing this podcast is to encourage women to do hard things yeah. um, and also acknowledge the fact that we're not the same as men but that doesn't mean that we can't put ourselves in those positions and train hard and do these stupid fitness competitions <laughs> and, and all of that stuff but yeah, I just guess to round off uh, this bit about Rocks Queens and everything you've built, where do you see it going? What are your long-term ambitions? I think we have a substantial presence in the UK, um, but with me going to Bali, I'm really keen now to kind of unlock um, Rocks Queens on a global level. So, mm. you know, this was our first High Rocks season, which is pretty nuts to think about how much we've done. And next month we've got like our first kind of festival bringing everyone together. So I think that wow. will kind of round up yeah. uh, the year. And then, yeah, going into next year, bigger, better, um, you know, in terms of our kind of footprint. And then, you know, really, I think, learning as we go and evolving. So mm. I think people enjoy the monthly events. And, like, I guess, again, those sort of things that I've been doing, like leaning on experts has been really beneficial. Bringing yeah. them in for workshops and things, continue doing that. But continue to be community-driven to understand what people want, Absolutely, where do they want yeah. support. Um, I think, you know, things around nutrition and mindset seem to be very key topics that people want support in. So making sure people do feel valued in that. Um, and yeah, just learning, like, it's really interesting to learn how do you cultivate a community and create this connectedness on a, on a at a scale, you know? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and also accepting, and this has been hard for me, like, you can't please everyone. So Unfortunately in, in, not. Yeah. <laughs> on whatsapp um when someone leaves the group it's, and you're an admin it's quite like mm. blunt it's like sophie has left the chat yeah. <laughs> like, what did i say <laughs> but you know that's that's fine like that is not going to be for everybody some people yeah. like the smaller groups um so i think you know it might be as we evolve the platform that we use evolves and so it, you know yeah. it can be more you know suitable for different you know sub subgroups of communities not just race specific but you know maybe sub locations um but yeah I'm I'm excited yeah it is exciting and I think it's really important to have those big goals and ambitions but also be willing to go with the flow and mm. change things and not be so rigid in your planning because yeah. sometimes things that you think will work don't and things that you don't mm. think will work do so mm -hmm. yeah I think you're absolutely in the right space to do that but as you mentioned earlier, obviously doing and running this community, you sometimes neglect your own mm. training and you're also working in the corporate world. So I wondered if we could just talk about how you're managing to balance that all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a evolving yeah. um, way of balancing it. Um, Work-life balance, I think, is so subjective mm. and I don't quite know what the perfect mix is. Um, and I think it really can can change. I think you learn so much about yourself and I think, you know, what really matters when it comes down to it 
you know, what things will you say no to because you want to pursue your, your, your passion. But then when it comes to like time with family, like, you know, and the fact that I'm going away means now that I really value seeing my grandma as much as possible before Mm. I go. Um, And I think, you know, moments like that make you really readjust where your priorities are. I think yeah. like in terms of pra- practical side of things, time blocking is my saving grace. <laughs> it's something that I do with my coaches and I just, I'm very like, you know, I, I really think about those blocks, like like you were doing it probably at uni, which is like, you know, these are my study blocks. And, Should have been. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, just like phone off and like head in the zone and just like, you know, you know, you know your energy output and input at the right times. Like for me, I'm a morning person. So yeah. that's when I can get the most done. Um, and that's like my rocks queen time. So between like six and eight is like rocks queen time. And then I go and do my job. And then I um, now also have got better at uh, outsourcing. So I think as you, um, one of the biggest piece of advice that I can give is you don't want to be the bottleneck in your own business. Mm -hmm. And so it's recognizing um, who is going to be able to support you in areas that you might not have the skills uh, to be able to scale. So, you know, you've got like Fiverr, which is a brilliant um, freelance Mm -hmm. website that I would recommend people because you can go on there and get support in anything from if that's, you know, support with sales support or like web design, um, you know, video editing editing all those things that like are very uh, skill driven um but can take up a lot of time so yeah you can't do it all so that's been really help outsourcing that and then having the ambassadors has been brilliant so everyone kind of has the arrow they look after um and so you know it's very much like here's the playbook and you kind of run and you sort of do your own events in that space yeah. i think that's been that's been really helpful that's good um and then just having like caitlin time <laughs> you know I think that's really important yeah but the irony like you know you think about the things that you love that like make you happy and it's so easy for them to be like neglected and put aside when 100%. things get busy and it's like no they should be prioritized more than ever you know things like sleep sleep is like so so crucial and it's, it's a cycle right because you're like stressed and then you work late and then you can't sleep and you have loads of caffeine and then you're tired the next day mm-hmm. so it's <laughs> yeah it's yeah finding ways to to break that and like this weekend I'm really excited because I've like planned it as like a weekend off like no rocks queens no sort of you know actual work and just enjoying yeah. some time with my friends um and then that will give me scary to let go because you're like oh that time I could be doing this and that and that but I know that that will give me more time and I'll be a better person uh coming out of that yeah yeah it's such an interesting thing this whole like work-life balance because Mm. I feel like people are always offering different advice but Mm. that's really useful to people and I'd also say that sometimes you have to like test your limits and almost get it wrong like there was a point a while back where studying at university obviously I was doing this podcast and had a part-time waitressing job and there was also like a few things that were taking up a lot of energy in my mind Mm. and uh were draining me I guess and I remember having a conversation with a friend and she was like what can you practically do like you have no routine Mm. like can you implement some sort of routine can you remove some of these things that are draining your energy and I've Mm. heard this be described as like when you've got open loops in your mind, Mm -hmm. um, that can feel really hard to manage because you're constantly thinking about things. So it's almost like closing those loops. Mm -hmm. So it's like ticking things off your to-do list or in my case, dumping that boy, you know, to suddenly have this like free, freed up space in my brain. Because I think that's when it gets so overwhelming. And since Mm -hmm. that point, I've definitely got a lot better at managing everything more sustainably but it's hard and I also think that's really important like you say to make time for social plans Mm. and make time for yourself because those are often the first things to go and Mm. it's sort of one of my bugbears with this whole personal development space is that it can become quite selfish almost and and maybe if people aren't even doing that intentionally but you become so focused on working on yourself Mm. and it's like right all I'm going to do is put time into the business and go to the gym and do my you know mindset stuff and it's like when are you gonna see your friends when are you gonna relax when are you gonna 
I don't know, take some time off to just have fun mm. and be you. It becomes another job. It really does, yeah. yeah. And I, I completely agree with you. And I hope it's a philosophy that I'm trying to like bring into the Rocks Queens. When we went to the World Champs, it was about, yes, we're there, but let's enjoy the fact that we've made it. Exactly. And I made a big thing about like, I got in, you know, like do we have a villa with all the girls and like I got in a glam squad. So everyone felt like oh, special going to the after party because like, you know you've made it here let's enjoy it like you know and like yes we have worked so hard and I don't want to take that away from us but like you said it's so important to have both yeah it, it's meant to be fun as well yeah like, you're meant yeah. to enjoy the journey mm. and yeah when you do then achieve those goals like allow yourself time to celebrate them yeah. for sure but yeah just to round this up you obviously mentioned you're moving to Bali yes what, when's that happening that is a huge huge leap it really is. Um, so I go um, first week of August. Wow. Uh, everything's sorted. Um, so I am just kind of waiting Going by now. yourself? Going by myself. But I guess I'm now not alone, right? Like I have the Rocks Queens and I've been starting to kind of make connections out there because mm -hmm. I was a bit nervous that I'd get there and be like, okay, I don't know anyone. So in, you know, in preempting that, I've kind of messaged a few people yeah. and I'm going to, I've got a gym that I'm going to join. So I'll, I'll be fine. But I just, there's, so, there's something in my gut that's telling me I've got to do it. And I just want to listen to that. And I think it's, um, I think it'll be the start of something exciting. I think it will unlock a new, it's not just me moving physically, it's also me showing myself that I can not just think, but actually like act on this. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm literally leaving behind a lot, but I, I, I know and I want to move forward. I think I've been a bit stagnant. My energy has been a bit stagnant. Things have been moving forward in terms of rocks, queens, and that's brilliant. But I think, you know, I'm kind of in the same physical space and for me to evolve as a person I'm kind of feel like you were saying I'm kind of like an onion like kind of shedding layers yeah and I also had a relationship that like uh, wasn't serving me I don't think we were serving each other by the end of it and we were holding each other back and I think it was so hard to let go of that but I feel so much better for that and I'm sure they feel the same and one of the things within that relationship was this disconnect between I want to travel and he didn't yeah. and I think I kind of that buried the dream even more and so mm. I think now I feel this like new energy to just be a bit selfish you know I, I'll own it I am being a bit selfish it's what I want to do and I spend so much of my time thinking about what other people want but for the first time I'm kind of listening to what Caitlin wants yeah and I'm like so proud of myself that I'm doing that because like I've like not listened to that voice in a very long time yeah and you should be proud of that because it is a scary move but it's an exciting one mm. at the same time and I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision to make but I'm sure everything will fall into place and uh, yeah I think that's interesting that obviously in a relationship sometimes you feel like your future is going to go one way and you imagine the future with that person exactly. or in a different situation in a job or something and then things take a slightly different turn but I think that's what you were saying before about everything sort of happening for a reason right yeah but um I'm gonna ask you the question that I ask every guest just to round us off which is if you had to give someone a piece of advice or you can share a quote that you like to help people achieve their personal best what would it be I think it has to be take the leap I think that is what I would say has been a consistent theme in my story uh, that has helped me to kind of get to where I am and I will own a thousand times that like I've taken the leap and it's not worked out mm. but like it's brilliant because you learn so much from it and it gets you closer to what will be the right path um, and you don't have to do something drastic like move abroad it can literally be just like what I did like messaging a few people because what's the worst that's going to happen yeah yeah I agree I agree so much and that was another Mel Robbins piece of advice actually is, um, yeah, she was particularly talking to people in their 20s about when you, you wanna do something, but it feels quite bold. She's like, just break it down, make it like a much smaller thing. Like you say, you don't have to pack up your whole life yeah. and move abroad. It's like, why don't you go away by yourself for a few days or a week or mm -hmm. research some places you might wanna go. Like just scale it down a bit so that it doesn't feel so scary, but you're still, um, honoring what you want to do if that yeah. makes sense and you're still gonna work towards your goals but 
yeah it sounds like you're gonna move on to some really exciting things and uh I hope people feel really encouraged listening to that because not to say that you're not satisfied with how your life is now but there will be people listening who maybe are and they need that like boost to just take the leap and try something new and I think Rocks Queens is a perfect example of that as well because you had the idea and you've sort of made it come to life and that's so inspiring so I really appreciate everything you've said thank you (laughs) and and likewise like you know I think for you know I think it's brilliant that you're now having episodes that you focus on yourself because yeah for, for you also what you've built and the impact that you've had in such a short time like I was so like grateful to be like allowed to come on here so I like back at you yeah thank you so much yeah and it's it's uh I think people think that it's um just easy to do these things and it's not it does take uh it takes a lot of personal belief I suppose and Mm. me launching the solo episodes now is like okay I'm pushing myself again Mm. because that feels quite scary and I also think are people gonna listen are people gonna like it so I really appreciate you uh, saying that. But the last thing I want to ask is where can people go if they want to find you or join the Rocks Queens community? Yes. Um, so on Instagram, uh, we are rocks underscore qu- uh, queens. And via our bio, you can join uh, the WhatsApp community. Um, and then from there, you can pick and choose as many or as little groups um, as you want. Amazing. I yeah. am going to have to dabble in High Rocks at some point. Yes. <laughs> so many people have said to me, have you done it or are you going to do it? I'm like a bit scared, but... Maybe I'll maybe I'll join through you. Yeah, good idea. Give it a yeah. go. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh thank you everybody for listening. <laughs>